Good evening, folks. It's Diamond with the Oppenheimer Ranch Project Magnetic Reversal News and Shinrin Yoku bringing you a grand solar minimum update Saturday, March 6th, just before midnight, Mountain Time 2021. The models are in. It's a sin. Heavy snow to hit central Canada as well as, well, the upper Midwest, the northern tier. It's a queer. T take a look at Wisconsin, Michigan, Iowa. Illinois, it's a sin, the big story, snow, rain, a welcome sight in Colorado, but drought still a big problem. <sighs> Keep calm, it's boom time. Let's talk about the drought then and now, a mega drought in California. Well, it is cold there. Here, take a look at the pictures, July 2014, no water, boom, back in 2011, record water. Same thing is going to happen anytime soon, but... Here is the drought intensity map of the northern U.S. And you can see the Four Corners region is the epicenter of the hellish drought. Arizona, the big winner, followed by Utah, second only to New Mexico, Texas, and then Colorado. So we're all suffering from a drought. But the good news is that there is a wet pattern for the next several weeks. And we're going to cover that. Holy hail. Photos show hail blanketing Daytona Beach like snow. Ho, ho, ho. This is the most global warming goodness they will ever see. Hail falls during a storm in Daytona Beach Saturday, March 6th. Yeah, that's Florida. That's today. Storms moved through central Florida on Saturday, prompting nasty weather that led to, well, Al Gore's worst nightmare. S Central Florida covered in the global warming goodness. Take a look. There's, those are palm trees. Hello. And a lot of these plants are damaged from that hail. They just don't know about covering it up yet. But they will know. Sign of the times. Right there. Sign of the times, folks. Brighter. And still a chill for Sunday, but changes are ahead in the Northeast like a beast. It's freezing. Brrr. February's Arctic blast in San Antonio has few historical comparisons. And we're talking Texas, the nexus of the Schmexus. What is the coldest of all times? Well, in San Antonio, where to start? Minus 8 degree wind chill on the morning of February 4 15th. In San Antonio, achieved the second coldest wind chill since records have ever been kept back in 1947. So there was a minus 12 chill back in 49, 107.5 hours below 33 degrees starting February 12th, continuing through the 17th. San Antonio saw below freezing temps amazingly. This came up 90 minutes short of the record. 109 hours below 33 in January 1951. And four separate calendar days with measurable snow. Ho, ho, ho. Another record broken. So, sign of the times. There's certainly not warming in the country, but there is unsettled weather. Along the West Coast, elevated fire threat in the high plains. Rain and high elevation snow will impact the Pacific Northwest to Northern California to early next week. Lake effect snow will be possible. Near the lower Great Lakes this weekend, there is an elevated fire weather threat in the high plains today. Hello. Look for the pink zones and click on your county for more warnings and watches. Now let's break it down. Downtown Leroy Brown. Let's walk the models through day at a time. Here we are on your Sunday, which is your fun day. Snow moving into the northwest. We're going to be seeing some heavy snow moving into the mountains of Washington State and Oregon. Just a tippy touch in the northern Sierras, as well as a, a light smattering in the northern Rockies. And then your Monday morning, take a look. By Monday afternoon, Tuesday night, heavy snow moving into the Sierras. More snow in the Pacific Northwest. Heavy snow moving into central Utah. And a, a light bit of snow in the uh, Great Lakes region. And those snow belts those lake snow effect areas of New York. Here's your Tuesday. Boom! That heavy snow moves up through central Canada, including Alberta, Saskatchewan, and Ontario. Take a look. It's scary. -o. This is going to just move east like a beast through Wednesday. And then we have an outburst here in Colorado, as well as Montana, St. Anne, Schmana, 
And look at that through your Thursday. We're going to be seeing snow picking up in Minnesota, northern Wisconsin. Hello. And we have the full trifecta effect here. So the Sierras are going to be pummeled here. It's looking Tuesday, Wednesday, through your Thursday. Sierra is going to be pummeled, as well as Nevada picking up snow, Utah picking up snow, Arizona picking up moisture. Oh, much needed. Then boom! By Saturday, March 13th, one week from today, look at these totals in eastern Colorado. Hello. Northeastern New Mexico. This is going to be, this is one of the driest regions on earth. And they're going to be picking up some, well, global warming goodness. And that's a boom. Total snow mass for the northern hemisphere, excluding the mountains, has just reached epic proportions as of the last observation, March 5th. Off the charts, it's not only 500 gigatons above normal, it's now 700 gigatons above the multi-decadal average going back to the 80s, folks. More snow. Over 100% more snow than the 1980s. Hello. Grand solar minimum much? I, I agree. Now, we could swoon over this, but we have many more pressing topics to consider. Update on Farag Dalishfal, <laughs> Fag Radishfal volcano, and that's where the activity is now happening in Iceland. We thought it was Kreisvik, we thought it was Rakianis, but it is in fact Krag Rajfral. Krag Rajfral. Earthquake activity is most limited to small earthquakes. Risk of eruption has not been reduced with current change in activity. The magma dike that is at the shallowest is about two kilometers, but has an average depth of five to eight kilometers. Most earthquake activity is closest to Fag Radishfal mountain north. And the dike is situated between the mountain itself and Kilil Mountain, which is the big pointy thing that everyone's looking at that's not actually a volcano. Now, this volcano has not erupted for 12,000 years, so there's very limited activity on it and information. There has not been any magma activity observed at Krajshevik and Rekianis, all earthquake activity in those volcanoes are due to crust stresses and changes due to the inflammation at Fagradishval. So there's that. And we do have the latest. Let's just refresh it to show you that uptick just a few hours ago. Hours of powers. And they are actually recording a 5 plus magnitude earthquake on the kickoff of this harmonic tremor that could be, well leading to the eruption, which we're waiting for. Let's check out the USGS. Boom! There's a lot of red spots. Not, not a single one in Iceland. Well, we do have a few. So they're reporting a 5.2 in Volgar. That's the one we're looking for. And some aftershocks. So this could be the event, folks. We're waiting for aftershocks down in the region uh, in the southwestern portion of the Ring of Fire here in Indonesia and uh, New Zealand. Multiple aftershocks up to 6.2. Who knew? And we have activity in Hawaii as well as the Carib. We could see some volcanoes erupting in the Caribbean uh, in the coming days or months. And the Philippines booming. Wow, it's quite exciting. And it's, it's so exciting that we can see rare volcanic plumes drift over Lake Michigan after the eruption in Italy. And these are plumes of volcanic ash that are happening from the Mount Etna nine paroxysms that we've been reporting on. Now watch this at the end of the video. Boom. Do you see that white strip there? There will be a white strip that, that moves across here. Take a look. Right there. The, that's Etna. Ash. Right there, watch this line. Right there, develop. That is Etna Ash. <laughs> Kiss my ash. They won't even let us pause it on that. That's amazing right there. Amazing footage. Worldwide Volcano News Update. Etna, Pacaya, Semaru, Reventador, Vianimov on the list. Raung, Sangay, and Sakurajima. 
Now let's see what's happening with Aetna. Eruption just happened moments ago. Cloud height estimated at 17,000 feet. This is going to be spectacular. We, we have not seen this. So after three days of relative calm since the last lava fountaining and the ninth paroxysm episode, it seems now the crater... Let's read more. Yeah, we need to read more. A, there's a new eruption underway at the crater accompanied by typical steep rise in volcanic tremor, indicating magma moving upwards through the volcanic conduits. Strombolian activity has been picking up at the summit vent of the new southeast crater during the past hours, hours of powers, and it now seems to be heading towards lava fountaining, also another typical sign of the impending paroxysm coming and and we're not bumming take a look and that's boom time 11 minutes in and a few dabs later where were we skater hello hater there we are live so what we're experiencing now is etna's 10th paroxysm in two weeks like tweaks seismic update we already covered that Shit is lighting up, folks. <laughs> what do we got here? Yeah, rare volcanic plumes. We just showed you that. Like crack. And we're at the uh, Etna paroxysm. And that's boom time. And we're seeing Etna's... Uh, the 10th the paroxysm is blowing to 36,000 feet. That's pretty substantial. It's pressing up onto the stratosphere once again for the maybe seventh time in two weeks. That's certainly going to cause a cooling effect in early spring in the northern hemisphere, specifically Michigan, 45 degrees north latitude. Hello. Uh, multiple events there. So, so there's that. So, hello. Oh, my goodness. Antarctic seals reveal worrying threats to disappearing glaciers. Antarctica is melting away. We're all dead and it's never going to end. In fact, here's a close-up view of the crack that made the mega iceberg. It's not loading. It's choding. It's a big white screen. Here you can see the crack here in real time. Look at it. So there's huge icebergs cracking off of Antarctica as we head over to solar minimum. Dot net. If you're looking, if you're wondering where Giles went from uh, Australia, this is his website. And if you pan all the way down to the bottom of the data set, you're going to get some Antarctic data here. That's well, it's quite telling. And and we're going to be showing it to you. Look at this uptick here. Look at this upsweep here in Antarctic ice exceeding all data. That's the Antarctic sea ice extent <laughs> in the last week ticking up a time bomb. Absolutely the most impressive uptick in Antarctic sea ice that we have ever seen on the channel in the last five years. And if we can get to some of these better graphs here, take a look at this. I wonder if we can hope at this. Yeah, let's... See if we can blow it up. We'll see how this plot works out. Okay, this is pretty fantastic. Take a look at this uptick. Now, what we're going to show you is this major uptick that's happened in the last week and a half, exceeding one, two, three, four, five, almost every single year except for 2013 and 2015. And it's about to exceed that number. And down here, the same thing is happening. A major uptick in Antarctic ice after the coldest year in Australia in a decade is embarrassing global warmness around the world because they're not reporting on this major uptick in Antarctic ice. After an ice sheet the size of a continent has broken off, Antarctic ice is swelling to record proportions before our very lives. And no one is reporting on it except for Giles and Diamond. But there's that. 
Now take a look at this. A hovering ship photographed off the Cornish coast by Walker proves the Earth isn't flat. In fact, it proves why you can see Michigan uh, on Lake Michigan over there uh, across state to state from 150 miles away. This is a mirage, folks. And it's been well known for, well, forever. For tens of thousands of years, the mirage is something that will trick you and will prick you right in your pants like ants, like fire ants in Florida, if you've never been there. The moon has a tail that sends beams across Earth's, and it's made of sodium, which means you will get fat and diabetic, but it's still science, so we're going to report on it. And there's a tail that will make you fatter. Scientists announce a physical warp drive is now possibly and seriously possible. Serious. And it's just not the graphic that trips us out, but I did do a few grams of mushrooms moments ago, so I'm going to get in touch with those that are real. Not only that, we're about to take a trip to Shiprock, where some of the most fantastic petroglyphs you've never been told about we will report on in just a few days, as well as an interview that we're having in the morning with one of the most prolific scientists and, well, anti scientarianists ever. Proper prior planning prevents piss poor performance as we reveal this interviewee in just a moment. The great dying, Earth's largest ever mass extinction, is a warning for humanity. Now, this is a headline that's going to be catching on over the next coming days. And they're talking about the Permian extinction. Yeah which happened between the Paleozoic and the Mesozoic Empire, right before the dawn of the dinosaurs. But I want to just bring you through some of the shit that they're talking about in the beginning of the article. And let's just focus in on this paragraph. In, the, in fact, in fact, that's what they say. The evidence compiled by scientific research on today's pace of change is ominous, to say the least, is what they say. Carbon dioxide in the atmosphere is increasing at a pace 100 times faster than it naturally should. This statement alone is 100 times more bullshit than has ever been spoken. Because human-made carbon dioxide is less than 10% of all the carbon dioxide emitted from our planet. And how humans could be causing an increase pace at 100 times faster than natural is 90% bullshit based on facts. Now, the second supposition, our planet is warming 10 times faster than it has in 65 million years ago? Well, 11,000 years ago, ho, 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 the planet warmed 23 degrees in 2,000 years. There is nothing to set a precedent to that. And the fact that this article says that we're warming faster than 65 million years ago is bullshit because it's not faster than 12,000 years ago based on facts. And it also says our oceans are acidifying 100 times faster than they have in the last 20 million years. Also a lie. And the oxygen dead zones in our oceans have increased tenfold. That's true. That's pollution. That's you. That's major industrial shit charts. So while the pollution has increased tenfold, the acidification has not increased 100 times whatsoever. Neither has the warming increased 10 times because 11,700 years ago, the planet warmed 23 degrees C in 1,000 years. And our warming is not happening at all. So the fraud is exposed. 
200,000 years ago, however, there was cities in Southern Africa. Now, here's my problem. I agree that these city, cities have existed. And Lee and I have looked at all of this, these stoneworks, all through Southern Africa. The problem is that the non-scientists claiming that these are 200,000 years old and whatever his explanation is, is total garbage. And that's, uh, unfortunately, Tellinger. Now, Tellinger has been spewing nonsense about giants and just what, what has happened to this man in the last three years is more embarrassing than it is what has happened to science in the last five decades. And that's all I'll say about Tellinger. He's a fraud. He's selling books. And we could actually be doing science on these particular sites that could glean knowledge that has nothing to do with uh, Mud Fossil University, fake giant bones, or any other bullshit that he's purporting. These structures that we're looking at are actual structures that were created by man a very long time ago. Now, were they leaching gold from sediments because they had alchemistry that was particular to leaching out the elements? Or were they housing animals in these weird, untraditional uh, geometric structures? I doubt it. Something else was going on here. But anything Tellinger tells you, well, you should be very suspect of it because I've listened to it and uh, <laughs> it's garbage. Mercury meets up with Jupiter. Saturn and the moon, too, in the morning sky this week. Here's Mercury, Jupiter, and Saturn, and that's about 5 a.m. If you live where I am, look up. Be safe. Now, if you haven't heard, volcanoes cause cooling, and here are the graphs to tell you the story. Paleo geographic maps of uh, temperature and time back to 1750, showing you the dips from Lockie, Tambora, Casaguina. Krakatoa, El Chicon, Pinatubo. And these are all controlled by the sun. Solar Max, Solar Men, that's when major eruptions occur. And they're all called Grand Solar Minimums on this channel. And here you see some of the recent ones. And here you see some of the recent drop downs caused by these Grand Minima. The sun causes eruptions which cool the planet. I can't say it any more clear. The Cascades will erupt now in the coming 10, 15 years, starting now, just like they did 200 years ago during the last Grand Minima, Dalton. So there's no question. 400 years of sunspots do not lie. And the Cascadia fault rupture zone is available for more movement. Those who cannot learn from history are doomed to repeat it, period. Now, tomorrow morning, I've been working on this for a eons. Brian J. Ford joins us to discuss his rehashing of the book, that was published back in 1971 that he wrote, Non-Science Returns. This thing is a textbook that's worthy of reading. About 10 times better than Ben Davidson's textbook, but still a good book because it's 10 times better than that book. But, and it's 10 times cheaper. <laughs> Non-Science Returns by Brian J. Ford. <clears throat> now, Brian has been on the cutting edge of non-science since 1971. And we're going to be tapping into his brain early in the morning tomorrow to glean insight. Glean insight for our viewers like never be seen before. Now, if you can read through me the, the title of this book with the pseudo 
transmogrificationalific exotransified reorientation proclivities inherently incorporated in extratistical cerebrally intextualized re Plato measurized with special reference to quasi national fashionalistic normatively. You can be, you're right there on Suspicious Observer's page right there. We're going to talk to Brian J. Ford about why science has been so bastardized and removed from the mainstream that people that claim new science need to use big words to confuse you. That's their purpose, like a schmerpus. And non science returns once again in its 50-year anniversary with us on our channel, like a boom, the science or non-science, whatever it is that you like, whatever garbage agnosticator and prognosticator you like to regurgitate your transmission from, we can elucidate your transmigration of your flat earth and migation and your, well, planet nine is here. And it's all Nibiru and chemtrails, isn't it? Proper prior planning prevents piss poor performance. When you think that cosmic rays and contrails are chemtrails and the government has enough money to send 800 million flights a day up to poison you and no one's dead yet. That's how dumb you are. That's all I'll say about that. Hey, if you watch people like Dave over at, well, anyway. Science is dead. Non-science has returned. And if you're gobbling it up, the gobbledygook from the mainstream, well, you're going to die with the rest of the population during the grid-down scenario. And we'll support you for that because we need food. Long peg is delicious if you slow cook it. Proper prior planning prevents piss poor performance. Click on one of the other boxes to get over the facts of what I just said. And be safe. Long pig is delicious. Na -na -na -na. It's almost like chicken, right? <laughs>